Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Mind Your Exam. So in this video we will be studying about analog to analog conversion. So analog to analog conversion basically means that we are representing some kind of analog data or analog information using an analog signal. Okay, so uh, why do we need to represent the analog signal in the form of another analog signal? So let's take an example and understand. See, you must have heard about radio stations or FM radio or AM radio. So what actually happens in such cases is that the government assigns a very narrow bandwidth to all these stations. And each of these stations produces a signal which is almost lying in the same range. Now, if we want to listen to any of these different stations and the signal that is sent by one particular station, then we will have to shift these signals which were originally generated by the station into a different range so that the range of signal, the signal uh, sent by each of these channels can be easily differentiated from the signals sent by another channel and this is possible when we shift the original analog signal or we change the original analog signal into another signal okay and how is it done it is done using one of the three techniques which is known as modulation so depending upon the characteristic of the signal that we are changing, uh, the analog to analog conversion can either be amplitude modulation, it can be frequency modulation or it can be phase modulation. So we will be studying all these today starting with amplitude modulation. So in amplitude modulation, the amplitude of the carrier signal is changed depending upon the amplitude of the modulating signal. So what is a modulating signal? This is the signal which we originally want to transmit. So this is the original information or the original analog data you can say. Okay. So now this signal which is the modulating signal is having some kind of amplitude and it will have some kind of frequency and phase because we have seen in the previous videos also that every analog signal has a frequency phase and an amplitude now we use a second analog signal which is called the carrier signal now the carrier signal will be changed depending upon how the amplitude of the original signal that is the modulating signal depending upon how the amplitude of this modulating signal is increasing or decreasing the amplitude of the carrier signal will also increase or decrease okay so when we are talking of amplitude we are uh, not only talking about the peak amplitude but all the amplitude ranges okay so uh, basically what happens is we have a carrier signal in amplitude modulation and we have a original signal which is also known as the modulating signal now we check what are the amplitudes of the modulating signal at different points in time and depending upon the amplitude if the amplitude is low the resulting signal which is the modified version of the carrier signal will have a lower amplitude then if the amplitude of the modulating signal increases after some time then the amplitude of the carrier signal is also increased in the final modulated signal that we are creating okay so basically the carrier signal is being changed depending upon how the amplitude of the original signal is getting changed across times okay but the frequency and the phase of the carrier signal remain constant that means there are no changes which are made to the frequency or the phase of the original carrier signal the only change comes in the terms of amplitude so as you can see here this in this time slot 
the amplitude of this original signal is at a particular voltage level but this voltage level that means at this point the amplitude has increased that is why in the resulting signal the modulated signal after amplitude modulation at this particular time the amplitude of the carrier signal has been increased then at this time when the amplitude has reduced here also you can find a reduction in the amplitude and at this time when the amplitude has again increased the amplitude of the carrier signal has also increased in the final wave that has been obtained after amplitude modulation. Now after amplitude modulation let's come to frequency modulation. So this is the second kind of analog to analog conversion technique. Now as you must have understood in frequency modulation the frequency of the carrier signal is getting changed and it is getting changed on what basis? It is again getting changed on the basis of the amplitude of the original modulating signal. Okay, And again peak amplitude and phase of the carrier signal remains constant. So in case of frequency modulation only the uh, frequency of the carrier signal is getting changed amplitude and the phase remain constant okay so let's take an example this is the original analog signal that we have uh, and that we want to whose whose information we want to transmit this is the carrier signal and this is the resulting signal after of performing frequency modulation. So what will actually happen is in this region when the amp, uh, the frequency of sorry in this region of the original signal when the amplitude of this signal is high the frequency of this carrier signal would be increased okay. Now in this region when the amplitude of the original signal has been reduced the frequency of the carrier signal would be also reduced as compared to the frequency which was present when the amplitude was higher okay so what we do we have to check for the original wave the amplitude is being checked and what do we have to change for the carrier wave the frequency okay now you must also remember that uh, frequency modulation is performed using voltage controlled oscillator. Now voltage controlled oscillator or VCO what it basically does is that the frequency of this oscillator will change based on the amplitude of the original signal that it is receiving. So if the amplitude is increased then the frequency of the voltage oscillator becomes high otherwise it maintains it remains at a given frequency again if there is a further decrease in the amplitude then the uh, frequency of the oscillator will further reduce okay so the frequency of this oscillator changes on the basis of the amplitude of the original signal analog signal uh, which we are trying to transmit whose information we are trying to transmit okay now the last part is wavelength sorry the last part is phase modulation this is the third type of analog to analog conversion technique now again in this case what is being changed the phase of the carrier signal is being changed and it is again being changed on the basis of how the amplitude of the original wave which is the modulating wave which is uh, is being changed. So if the amplitude of the original modulating signal increases the phase of the carrier will be changed then when there comes a reduction or another further increase in the amplitude of the modulating wave the phase will be changed further okay now uh, in this case the amplitude of the carrier and the frequency of the carrier will remain fixed and the last important point in this case that you have to remember is that uh, phase modulation is very similar to frequency 
modulation that we have just studied but there is one difference that in in case of frequency modulation the change that occurs in the carrier frequency is proportional to the amplitude of the modulating signal but in phase modulation the change in frequency of the final signal is proportional to the derivative of the amplitude of the modulating signal so what we have seen that it frequency modulation we change the frequency of the carrier and we have seen that in phase modulation we change the phase of the carrier now if you start drawing the phase modulation diagram you will observe that in phase modulation also a change occurs in the frequency of the wave in such a way that the phase is getting changed it is performing phase modulation but it seems like it is very similar to frequency modulation okay so when you perform phase modulation the resulting signal seems like it, it is similar to the signal that we obtained after frequency modulation but theoretically the difference is that in case of phase modulation the change in the frequency of the resulting signal is proportional to the derivative of the amplitude in frequency modulation the change in the frequency was proportional to the amplitude okay so now uh, this was all about analog to analog conversion i hope you have understood all three types in case you have any doubt you can mention in the comment section if you understood this concept and all the three types of analog to analog conversion please let us know in the comment section below hit the like button share with your friends and also subscribe to our channel for more videos on computer science related subjects thank you for watching till we meet in the next video mind your exam